Hi, welcome to online tutorial videos from JCBRO Labs. For more information, you can visit us at www.jcbrolabs.org. You can also download the source code of this uh, this videos uh, from that website. In this particular video, we'll talk about uh, a pulse modulation techniques and specifically pulse amplitude modulation uh, from uh, of uh, digital communication. Let's see. Uh, this picture shows the pulse amplitude modulation. In pulse amplitude modulation, the amplitude of these pulses changes in accordance with the massive signal amplitude. So the information of the massive signal is being encoded into the amplitude of these pulses. So we'll try to simulate this particular waveform in MATLAB. So open MATLAB. In MATLAB let's first define the carrier frequency that means the carrier frequency of the pulse strain and let's define the massive signal frequency here we will uh, we will first uh, generate a pulse strain of a small duty cycle and then uh, we will change the amplitude of that pulse with according to massive signal and let's have a sampling frequency of 1 kilohertz. As we know, this sampling frequency is only for increasing the resolution uh, of the simulation. And the time period for which we want to simulate the signal, let's say for 1 second. And the time is stamp like for x axis. So 1 by fs to t. And that's it. Now, uh, for one second duration we will be having 1000 samples <coughs> but if we generate from up to t uh, generally matlab uh, generate one extra sample so we will take it out so we will consider uh, exactly the same number of samples which are required for one second of duration so let's cell it so everything has been generated carrier frequency message signal frequency sampling frequency now let's define the duty cycle of the signal let's say we have a 20 percent duty cycle and uh, now we will define a square wave or a pulse strain with that particular duty cycle so we have a inbuilt function square so we can write it like 2 pi fc into <coughs> fc into n and then duty cycle so we will have we, we will be having a signal wave so let's plot it as so by default the generated wave goes from minus 1 to 1 as you know generally pulse goes from 0 to 1 or so we will let's change its amplitude and make it up to 0 to 1 only let's have s point Whatever the, are the values of uh, as values which are less than zero, those all values will become zero. So let's again plot it. So now it's from zero to one. So this is a pulse strain which we have generated. Now let's generate a massive signal. Massive signal has been generated. Let's change it here. So, and let's plot it. So this is the massive signal. Massive signal wave uh, frequency was 2 hertz. So for one second duration, only two amplitude signals will be there. Now we need to define several terms related to that because, as we know, the amplitude the complete amplitude of the signal fixed to the first sample amplitude and which is corresponding to the massive signal waveform so whatever the massive signal information is at that sample the rest of sample of the pulse will be fixed at that point so for that we need to do uh, find certain points like first we will find what is the period of uh, uh, how many samples are there in one period of this square wave so that is 
length total number of time period divided by the carrier frequency okay so we have 50 samples in one period for 20 hertz signal now we will find the indexes uh, like starting indexes of the samples like uh, from where our pulse is being started only so that will one to uh, sample period difference to the length of n so these are the indexes where uh, uh, where our pulse is being started as first index 51 just after 50 sample 101 151 and so on so uh, all these things will be having certain relation in upcoming programming code. Now we will find how many samples are there for own period of time only. So let's say own samples are uh, seal. So total period of samples like number of samples uh, in one period into duty cycle divided by 100. We are making it seal because sometimes uh, due to, I uh, suppose they have 49 samples in one period. So in that case, uh, this will be, this will not be a whole number or integer value. So making it an uh, integer, we, we are doing, us, uh, we are using a seal operator. So that was period sam. Okay. So now own sample durations are there. That is 10 for 20 seconds. That's it. Fine. Now. Uh, let's define PM of zeros vector. So one comma. So now what we will do? Uh, we will create a for loop of one two because we already know uh, like. Uh, uh, what are the sample indexes and what is the length of those or how many is, uh, how many periods are there so up to the length of period or the length of index and then pam for index of i to index of i plus own sample will equals to m of index of i and, and. so now let's plot it So this is our PM signal which is being generated. Now let's uh, hold on and plot massive signal uh, on the M comma in different color. So as we were saying, uh, the starting um, the starting sample value is exactly the same as that of the massive signal value and it's written at constant so that is why pm stands for uh, this pulse width modulated wave is being generated there so let's say what happens if we change the different frequency so we have we have already created uh, our script for the, for the same and we will upload this script on our website so let's run it Uh, so this is the uh, this is the this is PM signal. This is massive frequency. This is pulse strain. So obviously the uh, resolution will be higher if the sampling frequency will be higher. Let's say we have a 50 hertz of sampling frequency. So there will be a better resolution uh, in pulse uh, in amplitude wise or you can say the better accuracy will be there at the end of the demodulation because the amplitude is uh, closely following the massive signal frequency so i hope you understand uh, from this video like uh, how to generate this pulse amplitude modulation uh, in matlab and you can also download the source code uh, from the website so that's it for this video thank you